Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. I am Nushahida Tahasana binti Saha, representing my group from UTEM. The title of my presentation is The Knowledge and Information of Autism Spectrum Disorders, Diagnosis, Treatment and Awareness. These are the content that will be covered in this presentation. First is introduction. Second is literature review. Third is methods, materials and results. And finally is the conclusion to the presentation. Introduction to the presentation. So it is talk about the autism. The increasing of number for autism can be seen year by year. The prevalence of autism spectrum disorder ASD is increasing in Asia and in the world. However, the cause of the autism still cannot be identified until today. This paper will discuss the general information about the autism. And it also will cover the knowledge and information about autism, how to diagnose the children or the child, the importance of awareness of autism, and treatment that could be used to help autism. As you can see in here, there are two statistics that showing the increasing number of autism every year. On the right side, this is from the USA. It is increasing from the one in 5,000 autism occur in community until now, one in a 50. It is mean it is drastically increased the number of the autism. The same goes to the left side of the statistic, which is shows that ASD prevalence per 1000 in Quebec, Newfoundland and Labrador and Prince Edward Island from 2003 till 2015. This is from Canada. It is also showing that increasing number of autism every year. And let's take a look at the literature review of this paper. So what does it mean by the autism? The autism is referred as ASD, which is it refers as a neurodevelopmental disorder. It is also impact social behavior, communication and language, and a narrow range of interests and activities that are both unique to the individual and carry out repetitively. The early detection from babies is very important as it can help to detect autism in children and we can take fast action to help this child. The previous research also shown that the autism may occur four times prevalence in the boy than the girl. However, it is still under mystery how it is happen and occur. In diagnosing autism, there are a lot of ways to diagnose people towards the autism. Most of the diagnosis was done at earliest age, uh, stage as 18 months. It is because early detection is very important as it can help to give a therapy to them. However, there is also diagnosis for adult. So this slide is showing some of the tests that can be done towards a human to test the autism. The most popular use is autism diagnostic observation schedule that usually use at the school. The second one that is popular to be used in Malaysia is modified checklist for autism in toddlers, which is the M chart. Okay, it can be get to get into this diagnosis at the KKM or Kementerian Kesihatan Malaysia. It's actually, there are a lot more of the diagnosis treatment and also tools for the autism. The word autism is widely used and frequently here. However, not everyone knows the meaning of the autism. That is why the study and awareness about autism is very important. It is because the number of the autism is increased yearly to help to help in creating the awareness to the society about the autism, 2nd April was nominated as a National Autism Awareness. Okay, so the April is the National Autism Awareness Month. 
Besides that, the awareness of the autism may help reducing indiscrimination and stigmatization and creating a sense of responsibility among people towards autistic children and families. The second one is we can spread the awareness through media. While spreading the awareness through media, it can incorporate specialized behavior training classes for teachers about childhood disorder. However, misconception about autism may be due to influence of public media, which often portrays autistic children as having high IQ, excellent mathematical talents, and skills. The second, or the next, autism awareness is by using special education. A special education provided by the government, usually for all of the special children. However, there is a some center that can focus on treating autism. One of the centers in Indonesia is the NASOM, or known as National Autism Society of Malaysia. It is a non-profit nationwide non-governmental welfare organization which was formed in 1987 by a group of concerned parents and professionals. The final awareness is about emotional awareness. The emotional awareness is very important, especially in autism self and also to the parents or caregivers. To help these autism people, there must be some therapy. So this therapy will be applied to autism people accordingly to their age as they are different therapies for adults and children. Some therapy can be used to help the, this autism population and each of these therapy is different according to the age level. The therapy needs to undergo repeatedly and required frequent diagnosis. It is not one-time therapy. The younger the patient, the more sessions that they have to go, and it is usually done by an expert. So the first therapy can be music therapy. The music and therapy will help the autistic children in reducing their restlessness and also fidgety behavior. It also shows that by using music and movement therapy, it's effective in helping young children to reduce their temper tantrum behavior during the session. According to Gareth's girl, music therapy may improve their skills in primary outcome areas that constitute to the core of the condition, including social interaction, verbal communication, initiating behavior, and social. The second one is SIT. SIT stands for Sensory Integration Therapy. SIT is used to restore effective neurological processing and increase the individual's ability to integrate sensory information by enhancing each of this system. And this SIT therapy is focusing on nine elements, which will cover first, child safety, secondly, opportunities to obtain tactile, vestibular, and proprioceptive sensory stimulation to support self-regulation, sensory awareness, or movement. Third, appropriate levels of participants' alertness. Fourth, challenge to postural, ocular, oral, or bilateral motor control. Fifth, novel motor behaviors and efforts to organize movement in time and space. Sixth, preference in the choice of activities and materials. Seventh, activities that are not too easy or too difficult. Eight, activities in which the participant experiences success. Ninth, and finally, support for intrinsic desire to play. And also therapeutic reliance. The third one is a robot therapy. The robot therapy can be either robot assisted or the robot social. So, the therapy is being called as robot assisted autism therapy. It is understand that by using this robot therapy, it will like to get engage the children in interactive learning activities that supplements and augment 
those delivered by the rabbis. It is also saying that by using this robot therapy, it can create enjoyable and engaging environment. Besides that, it can improve of the joint intention, imitation, verbal communication skills, and improvement. This is the example of the robot therapy used for the autism. This autism, uh, this robot can be in a human and non human as you can see in this figure there are two types of robot which is this is the non human and another one is a human the white one is known as a robot noun and this robot is known as a robot milo these two robots is frequently used in a robot therapy for the autism. It is because the children with autism will get easily distracted by using the robot and it is need to repeat several times in making them understand. By using robot, it is stably to do the repetition compared to the human. Besides that, by using this robot therapy, it may improve the academic capabilities of AAC patients by increasing the length and the quality of their attention. Here comes for the methods, materials, and result. In this research, we are going to use we are used the CAAC, which is the checklist for autism spectrum disorder. In this checklist, we're using it because it offers a quick, valid means of screening for and diagnosing children with autism regardless of age, IQ, or autism severity. It consists of comprehensive list of 30 symptoms of autism and samples from parents, teachers have been collected. There are 18 parents and 7 teachers who get involved in answering the question. For this question, it has been modified accordingly to the culture in Malaysia, which is we produce two versions of instruments, which is in Malay and English. This instrument has been checked by three specialists, which are language specialists and also child specialists. This survey has been distributed via Google Form and because of the pandemic COVID-19, there is a limitation on getting the respondents. However, the respondent from the whole nation has been collected. In this survey, it is divided into seven sections. The seventh section is the main section in this survey. The first is demography to know the background of the person who answered the questions. Secondly, is problem with social interactions. Third, preservation. Fourth, is somatosensory disturbance. Fifth, atypical communication and development. Sixth, mood disturbance. And finally, is problems with attention and safety. Since the 1 to 3, 30 is considered present if any sub-item under the symptoms is checked. The score of 15 or higher are in the autism range. Based on the result, there are 24 children get to score more than 25, sorry, more than 15. Only one get less than 15. Interviewed by the teachers saying that it is because the student who get into, involved in this uh, survey, he is clever, okay, and he has a few symptoms of autism. Besides that, he is also following the typical class at school and did not join any special class. The mean checklist score is 26 with a range of 15 to 30 and a standard deviation is 4. The importance of using this checklist, it can identify symptoms that occurs in autism children. By using this uh, questionnaire, we know that some of the professionalism in uh, parents self. 
it is because we can see the background from the parents and also the background for the students. So graph below showing the result for each of the subsection. As we can see, a problem with the social interaction, the high percentage is about the self-absorber or in own world. They are usually in their own world. And most of them also agree that poor social reasoning, which is the, uh, these autism children, is difficult in understanding social cues, commands, to do this facial expression and also body language. And a section B, which is a preservation, the highest is the obsessive preoccupations or extreme fixation on things like a computer games, letters, shapes, numbers, counting, objects or topics. Okay, so this is means that they are only focusing on one thing at a time and mostly doing the repetitive behavior towards the thing that they are going to play with. The third one is about the somatosensory disturbance. The highest one is limited food preferences. And yes, interviewed by all of the guardians, by the teachers saying that these autism children is very sensitive to their food. They only eat the thing that they are usually or regularly or they really like the food. The fourth section is atypical communication and development. And the highest one is about visual motor skills, which is, it is significantly higher than language skills during the preschool years or walking at a much early age than, walk, than talking. The next one is about mood disturbance. And we can see all of this like a very average. And we can see that the highest one is the moodiness and emotional ability that the cause for mood changes may not always appear such as laughter or distress for no apparent reason. Besides that, it is difficult on showing and recognizing emotions, emotionally unresponsive in some situation, lack of empathy or emotional reciprocity. Like they doesn't like to respond if freely or provide comfort when someone is hurt or sad or misinterprets the emotion or response. The next one is the problem with attention and safety. Okay, so they are more built with the Legos, means that they are usually playing with something they are usual with, they are familiar with. As a conclusion, this study is focusing on knowledge and information of autism in general. Not all of the autism people easily handle and not all of them has high IQ. Because of that, the awareness of autism is very important as it can help in encouraging knowledge and teach society to cope with autism especially in dealing with the parents with autism, as an early as a screening process can help the surveillance of children at risk for ASD. It can also help in providing early intervention programs which can reduce the effects of the disorder along with overcoming factors related. Education is very important and so special education for autism children. There are lots of ways to help them. They may choose the best for themselves. That's all only from me and thank you.